Okay, so who was at the panel here on Friday? With all right, we're going to reuse a lot of the same materials and all that. So just to let you know what you're paying for here. <laughs> <Not a theme. laughs> all right, in the not too distant future, or maybe 28 years ago, a group of guys gathered at a public access station in Minnesota and started ripping on movies. Not just any movies, but the bad movies. Headquartered in the Satellite of Love, Mystery Science Theater 3000 aired for 10 seasons on Comedy Central on the Sci-Fi Channel. Recently off of their MST3K reunion, the Omaha Comic Con is proud to welcome two of the stars of the show, Trace Balloon and Frank Conner. Big round of applause. The convention. Is your mic on down there? Uh, I, I can't tell. Am I on? No. Yes. Yes. Of killing a character, and then the character is just back next week. 
much like Independence Day movie where you just you can kill a character and they just keep on <laughs> How how often do you see Mystery Science Theater three thousand referenced in current stuff? I mean the, the joke about killing Kenny or seeing silhouettes against a movie screen talking. Uh you know, it happens, you know, a couple of times a month you see something that you go, oh yeah, that was probably influenced by us. But we were influenced by other stuff, so it's a whole circle of ripping each other off. So. Yeah, we did, um, we were specifically referenced on The Simpsons, which was amazing. So and, and I think uh, Futurama. Futurama, yeah. Um, and, and there's the, the news, uh, various news organizations have done the mystery science ripping. Yeah, on they have uh, when, when, the, when the Star Wars The Force Awakens um, trailer premium, this is even before the movie came out, uh, Chris Hayes on MSNBC did a thing where he showed the trailer with him and two other people watching it in silhouettes. Uh, uh, and they were, you know, they said they were, they were paying tribute to mystery science theater. And they, but, and they weren't even trying to be funny either, they were just talking about the trailer, but they just used that as kind of a framing device for it, which I, I thought was cool. Do you guys ever find yourself at the movies or watching something on TV and think, oh man, this would have been perfect for us to do? Try not to watch those kind of things. <laughs> <laughs> it, unless we're doing research to find uh, movies for our live show. I don't know if you know that Frank and I are still traveling the country, riffing on movies. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, we have shows coming up in Denver, uh, July 29th and 30th, and Durham, North Carolina. We, uh, on, August on the 5th, 5th, August 5th, we, we hope to see you all there. <laughs> we have your car keys. <laughs> Uh, and we'll be announcing more dates. Uh, keep uh, following us on Facebook and Twitter, themadsareback.com. Um, our uh, faithful companion and uh, uh, friend, Zoe, keeps uh, track of all that stuff for us. So. And we have a new podcast as well uh, called Movie Sign, uh, where we uh, talk about uh, we just talk about movies in general, uh, any kind of movie, good, we talk about bad movies, we also talk about good movies, anything that we're passionate about one way or the other. We are, the first episode premieres this coming uh, week, I believe, Tuesday maybe, and uh, we're, we're, good. Good. we're gonna be <laughs> talking about uh, Independence Day Resurgence, uh, which is the sequel that just came out, and then that leads into a discussion about war alien invasion movies like, for instance, uh, Teenagers from Outer Space. Um, and uh, that's going to be at cavecomedyradio.com and on iTunes. So, and we just, uh, I just put myself through the torture of watching uh, Batman v Superman for the podcast. Spoiler alert, you're not very good. <laughs> Let's open it up. Uh, any questions out in the audience? All right, I see one right over here. Not for mystery science. <laughs> uh, every movie we picked was uh, was ripe. <laughs> but I think there are, there are some that are worse than others, though. That's for sure. Yes, definitely. My very the very first episode I worked on was um, Rocket Ship XM, and that was the first one I did. I'm like, oh my god, it's such a bad movie. It doesn't even come close to being as bad as some of the movies that we did. <laughs> the Dead Talk Back was yeah. a horrible, horrible, the creepy horror. terror. Um, <laughs> worse than Manos. <laughs> <laughs> Castle of Fu Manchu. Castle of Fu Manchu. Hamlet, that um, was. So there were different <laughs> levels. And then some of them, you know, even though they were bad, you'd have an affection for them. Like, I, I liked um, Skydivers. I can't explain why, but I liked it. <laughs> and uh, I accused my parents. <laughs> so I related to it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and um, uh, Day the Earth Rose, I think, is. Compared to other films we did, there was a lot more to it, you know. That was a great question, and I'm going to give you a gift. I'm going to give you a copy of Rattlers, uh, which is a cinematic Titanic title. And Frank, tell, them, tell us about Podhouse 90. Podhouse 90 is uh, another podcast that I do 
which is a trace that I wrote. Uh, the episode that Trace is handing her is called uh, Dracula Has Risen in the Poles, and, it's, <laughs> and it stars uh, Trace Beaulieu as Dracula. <laughs> it has a great cast, Dana Gould is in it, Eddie Pepitone, Julie Klausner, uh, Lorraine Newman. So, uh, and those you can, you can also listen to for free uh, on iTunes. And what? Frank Conn. <laughs> free? That's an hour of content. I know. Solid music, comedy content. And you've done five of these, right? Yeah, five. And uh, I have a, new one, a newer one coming out later this year. Surely that one won't be free. <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> you know the phrase, you can't give this away? Uh, I found that to be the case. <laughs> Five solid hours of musical comedy radio theater with some of the most talented comedic cast, talent cast in the nation. It's true. And you're giving it away. And I'm free. giving it away. Because you know, you could argue that you guys set yourself up for this because MST3K always ended in the credits with keep sharing the tape. Yeah, stop that. Don't do that <laughs> Here's what we want you to do now. I'm at an age where it's more important to me is keep circulating the uh, arteries. Yes. <laughs> Just keep circulating your blood. Uh. All right, I see a question over here. Oh, that's, boy. there were, it's hard, you know, a lot of it just blurs into one, but things like what Trace just mentioned, uh, stuff like the, the Dead Talk Back and um, the Castle of Fu Manchu. That was, per, that was the one that I remember yeah. being the worst, because nothing happens. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, it just gets very tedious, but you know what, all, any kind of creative writing, or any kind of writing for that matter, um, becomes tedious at a certain point. It's uh, you can't. It's not all about inspiration. It's like the cliche. It's it's perspiration. And, and we had a lot of that in the writing. Yes, <laughs> there is, me, there's a lot of perspiration going on. So I think that's something anyone uh, involved in any creative endeavor, whether it's writing or, or making music or painting or that's uh, at a certain point it is just a kind of a a, a tedious job to get. To get it done, and you and, and, and in order to put out what you are, are trying to achieve, you have to make it through that. And other times, it's just fun and creative, and and, and and you're really enjoying it. But then you also go through those other phases where it's it just seems hard. And and we were we're, we were getting paid to watch television, so yeah, you know, that is an excellent question. Excellent question. Uh, I'm going to give you a gift. <laughs> Hot House 90, and and a copy of the Frank. Frank, tell him about the Frank. The Frank is a uh, <laughs> short film that Trace wrote and directed. It stars me as Frankenstein's monster. It stars Trace as Dr. Frankenstein. It has um, Dave Gruber Allen, um, who, by the way, you might know him from Gilmore Girls and um, Freaks and Geeks, among many other things. Uh, uh, Dave Gurrell is the guy who coined the phrase MST3K. He's the first guy who said that. He's in it. And, and also a lot of other uh, Mystery Science Theater cast members, Bill Corbett, Mary Jo Peel. Um, I think there even, even, there's, I think there's, uh, you see a part, you hear Joel's voice. Did you do this? Spoiler, spoiler alert. Yeah. There's some other guys that helped us too. Yeah, Josh does music in it. And Mike, Mike and, and, and uh, Joel also yeah. helped us with that. Do you guys get rec recognized out in public much? Do you, are you just... I didn't get recognized at our table. <laughs> <laughs> Frank is recognized all the time. I, um, well, it's, it's funny because when we were doing the show, we were never recognized. And the whole time we did it, because uh, a lot of times, uh, back then, Comedy Central was not on in a lot of cable. It's not like now, where it's on every cable channel, back then. So, even in Minneapolis, we were living right in the show, it wasn't on. Nobody had seen what we do, but now I do uh, uh, get recognized more often. I was on the subway in New York just the other day, and a woman across from me, um, 
recognized me and started talking to me, and I think the other uh, subway passengers were kind of annoyed. <laughs> That's an excellent question. I'm going to give it away. <laughs> do the people ever yell out to you, push the button, Frank? They do. They, they do. And in New York, believe me, you want them to say that. You know, yeah. there's a lot of things you don't want them to say. They don't want you to, to push or touch. So. Or turn your crank to Frank. Yeah. <laughs> Not on the subway. <laughs> All right. Uh, I see a gentleman back there with the red shirt. Yes. Uh, how did the 96 movie come about, and why this island earth? Uh, we chose this island Earth uh, when we went to Universal. Originally, we had uh, approached Paramount, uh, and we were going to do uh, the film When Worlds Collide. Uh, and Paramount said, well, uh, the movie has to cost at least $8 million, because that's what marketing budget was at that time for a movie that size. So we wrote an $8 million movie, and we went back to them, and they said, yeah, it's too much. Uh, <laughs> So the, the deal fell through there. We eventually went to Universal, who handed it off to Gramercy. Nobody wanted to do this. Uh, and they said, well, make it more like the TV show. Make it more like an episode of the TV show. Uh, and we went for $2 million, uh, because we spent so much already. And the, uh, we went through the entire library of Universal Films looking for a color uh, sci-fi movie and there aren't that many there's a lot of black and white uh, and we also went through all the television you know, which was kind of cool to get for a week to sit and watch like Coal Shack episodes <laughs> or whatever Universal had in the library so that's that's why this island earth happened <laughs> Let's go ahead and see you right here. Yes? Have you ever gotten mail or letters from people who work on shows or movies that you've been on? Be them angry or thankful? And also, because it's such a great question. Here, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> my mom grew up on these. I grew up on these, and my mom would absolutely love <laughs> uh, see us at our table afterwards, and then I can charge you. You're my child, I'll give you all the money you want. Not that much. When I say all the money you want, I mean within a no. Zoe, uh, Zoe, could you just get his wallet for us? <laughs> it's on you, it's empty. <laughs> so are our hearts. About if any people in the movies responded to us, or like wrote. Or yeah, uh, we actually did hear from uh, several people involved in the movie. All, all of them very positive. All of them really thought it was hilarious. Um, Miles O'Keefe, the star of uh, Cave Dwellers, uh, he called up. He said he thought it was hilarious. Um, Beverly Garland, um, who we did three of her films, who I grew up uh, loving on uh, my three. And uh, I got to meet her. It was so lovely. It was great. Um, Kim Cabral and Trace are friends because uh, Crow sang a love song about her. And Kim Cabral, this is absolutely true, she sent flowers to Crow. Not to Trace. To Crow. We, we did uh, subsequently become friends. Uh, I called. She put her number on the card, and so I called it. <laughs> uh, and uh, when I moved out to Los Angeles, she was very generous and let me stay at her house. She just said, I'm going to be out of town. Here's the keys to my house. Wow. At least she told me it was her house. <laughs> <laughs> may not have been accurate. But Randy Quaid was staying there. It's <laughs> <laughs> wow, like, wow, Kim, you look so different on TV. <laughs> right here, this How many times do we have to watch the movie? Uh, usually about a half dozen times, like six or seven uh, times. We would um, spend one day watching it, and then another day, and then we'd write sketches, and, and then we 
watch it again to rehearse it and have a run through of it. And uh, uh, and I think you're getting some good prizes. <laughs> 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 question, but uh, what, what's the language that one, don't let her listen to that. <laughs> All right, anyone over here? You there. I'm sorry. Oh, Invader Zim, that was really great. Um, I was, uh, some of you don't know, I was uh, the head writer of Invader Zim, which is another uh, very highly regarded show. It was only on for one season, and um, that was um, uh, a really great experience. And just to be around all that talent, Jonah Vasquez, who created the show, is brilliant. And, um, and the designers and the animators on that show, just did stunning work, and and I, you know, I, people come up and talk to me about Invader Zim all the time, and uh, um, I, I have to say, you know, it, it's a really great show. I my co contribution to it was minimal. It was, you know, I did contribute to it, but it was really Jonah Vasquez and the animators and the designers uh, who really made it what what it was. And I'm just really uh, proud to just be associated with it. And I, having nothing to do with it, am keeping your gift. <laughs> oh, Trace Bill, you come on down. <laughs> Wompy's out there. Weren't you also on Freaks and Geeks? No, I was not on Freaks and Geeks. Trace was. Trace was. Trace, I get back here. Why don't you talk about Freaks and Geeks? <laughs> Uh, yeah, Freaks and Geeks. Um, it turns out that Paul Feig, who created Freaks and Geeks, is a huge Mystery Science Theater fan. Uh, to the extent, I don't think he'd mind me telling you, he built his own robots. <laughs> what do you mean, oh? <laughs> one of us, one of us. <laughs> Wait, what are you, like, I can't believe how geeky that is. What, here? <laughs> here, really? Uh, but uh, Paul called me up. Uh, I had uh, actually worked with Paul. Uh, Josh and I worked on a uh, pilot for a show called Fast Food Films, uh, and Paul was one of the writers on, on the pilot. And then, uh, again, we used old movies, uh, and the premise was we would cut a full-length movie down to seven minutes and then make an infomercial out of it or some other thing, uh, another repurposing project. But I had met Paul there, and he called me up and said, hey, uh, I got this part, would you like to do uh, you know, a role on a television show? I went, yeah, okay. Uh, and Paul's been a great fan and supporter for years. I just did another show. Other, uh, other Space, right? Yeah, we just did another show for him uh, called Other Space, uh, sci-fi sitcom, which was on uh, Yahoo. So that's probably why you never saw that. <laughs> uh, who asked that question? Who asked that? Oh, that well, was I you. That, yeah. <laughs> that was you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go right over here, far side. Quick, quick. Closer to you, just in case. I'm going to make you walk. First, did you play Dark Star? I tried to play. I tried to play Dark Star, but I couldn't. I couldn't get through. We, if, for those of you who don't know, Dark Star uh, is, is a project we were part of. Um, uh, I don't know when it was released, like 2000. The only CD ROM released in 2012. Yeah. <laughs> uh, interactive movie kind of game, sort of mist like puzzle thing. Too hard for me. I just like running around shooting people. And I never played it because I've actually never played a video game in my life. So. <laughs> really? Never. <laughs> Well, now, um, yeah, with Cinematic Titanic and with the Mad Show, which Trace and I do, we write separately now. Uh, on Mystery Science Theater, it was all of us in a room watching a movie slowly and yelling out rests and typing them down. And 
now, and with Cinematic Titanic, because we all live in different parts of the country, and Trace lives uh, in Minnesota, I live in New York, and uh, so we write them separately, and then when we get together to do the gig, we get together and we kind of look at the, you know, look at the jokes we have, and then kind of decide then which one works. And also in the case of Trace and myself, um, we do a scripted show, but there's always, when we do the shows live, there's a lot of spontaneity and a lot of the best jokes happen just uh, while we're doing the live show. That's why you must come to a live show. People have asked us for copies or DVDs, and uh, those are too hard. <laughs> Thank you. What are the, are, are you comfortable doing the live shows? I mean, you, you were the voice of the robot for so many years, you weren't in front of the camera, now you're out in front of the live audience. Oh, we've been, you know, we're since, we've been stand-up comics since the 80s, so uh, that's that's really where our love is, is being in front of a live audience. And, and we're such hams, you can tell. Uh, <laughs> who, here, who here saw Trace and I do stand-up at the Spaghetti Works in 1986? <laughs> 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 yes, Dr. Bragg. But we already... We busted this territory in the late 80s. Downstairs? <laughs> What's that? Downstairs? Yeah, I think it was downstairs, wasn't it? Yeah. Noodles. Yeah. Noodles, yes! <laughs> Were you there? Uh, no, I would have been 10, but... <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's a Spaghetti Works historian. <laughs> Still serving the same office. Noodles in 92. Noodles. Oh, wow. <laughs> It's fun. There's some questions way in the back. There's, there's the lady right here in the black and the hat there. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Can you can you shout that out? Do you remember the episode Star Force? Star Force? Yep. Fugitive yeah. Alien. They do. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that Fugitive Alien, but I, uh, but yeah, you're right, I think it was called uh, Star Force. I knew it, but that was a, he, that was the, he tried to, was that, he tried to kill me with a forklift episode? Was that a uh, Come on, you, you gotta come up, my heart is giving up. <laughs> <laughs> you heartless bastard. <laughs> hey, nice duster. I complimented you on that the other day, didn't I? Thank you very much. Good question, excellent question. You must be self-basting in there. <laughs> <laughs> he makes his own gravy. <laughs> Winter Soldier? Well, a little louder. Oh, new releases? Well, uh, like Frank, I stayed up late the other night and watched uh, Batman v Superman. And that, that would be one worth ripping. But then I don't want to watch it again. <laughs> yeah, we, um, uh, we're still in our live show. We're still doing the old, like, 1950s B movies. And uh, there's something about them that, for, for me, is more fun to riff than on them. There, there's, there, there's a sincerity and uh, an earnestness to them and an innocence to them, even though they're they're from Satan's spawn, but, uh, <laughs> but um, we, we're still kind of devoted to, to uh, and plus they're, they're, they're really cheap, <laughs> we can afford to do them. Uh, that's a, that was a big factor at Mystery Science Theater, it's a big factor with Trace and myself. If we wanted to do an um, Independence Day research, it would cost us a, a way too much money. Right, there's a young boy here in the blue that's had his arm up for a while. What is your favorite All right, come up front and, and say it to us. What's your favorite invention exchange? Our favorite invention exchange. Come all the way up. Come on. Oh, uh, that's a good question. I, I always have had a... Is this rated children? Is this one of children's time? Yeah, I okay. can. <laughs> are you are your parents here? Give this to your dirty old man, <laughs> and you can watch that one. <laughs> um, at the invention exchange is, um, I, I think that where I 
was in the operation game, uh, <laughs> and Trace was operating on me. Uh, I always uh, like that. And just in terms of, uh, I don't know how if any other anyone else like. I always really liked the uh, Rat Pack chess set, uh, <laughs> which was a chess set based on Frank Sinatra and the Rat Pack. And what I liked about it is it's it's actually very scholarly. It's, uh, it, everything in it is very accurate about Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> Which is something I don't think anybody else cares about. <laughs> those, those are huge, huge, I'm a huge fan of all of those people, of Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis Jr. and Dean Martin. So that was a really fun one for me to write. All those invention exchanges, all the props you saw were out of the hands of Jeff Maynard and Patrick Brandstegg and uh, Bees McKeever, and they did an amazing job making, we just write stuff, and th then they would have to go build it. So it was amazing that, you know, they could assemble the Rat Pack chess set or make a giant uh, prop that Frank could get in to, we could play operation on him. So those guys deserve a, a huge, uh, not a round of applause because they're not here, <laughs> but a uh, big credit, those guys are great. Well, just in terms of the darkness of the humor, I really like the uh, vending gut machine, where I wasn't in my liver, was inside a vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a, a, just a, I see a hand in purple hair. Uh, was there any shows? Uh, Mr. Science Theater? Uh, if there were any episodes that we made but did not air, I don't think that's the case. I think every uh, every episode we made unfortunately aired. <laughs> <laughs> it's up for maybe Green Swan. How old are you? Well, that, that's uh, those. There are a lot from the uh, KTMA TV 23 era that that, that aired. Those aired, but they seen again because that's a whole separate issue from the regular Mr. Science Theater. There, there is an episode of Cinematic Titanic that we wrote completely and then we realized we didn't have rights to. Uh, Terminal, Island. Terminal Island. Uh, with Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck, uh, the Ginchy older daughter from Lost in Space TV show and then some other people. But yeah. it, a woman in, woman in prison which is my favorite genre of all. <laughs> Wait, with Tom Selleck? Tom Selleck is in it? Yeah. Women in prison? Well, he wasn't the woman in prison. <laughs> all right, before we get to another question, quick show of hands for the room. How many of you have had your picture taken with Frank and Trace? All right. How many of you would like those photos destroyed? <laughs> How many of you are going to go at 3 o'clock to get your picture taken with Frank and Trace? The same people. <laughs> what? All right, 3 o'clock when this panel ends, we're going to go next door, and everyone's going to get their picture taken, so. We'll just sit in silence until that happens. <laughs> All right, right here. Well, I, it was my job, um, actually, to look at films, um, and there were a lot, uh, to look at movies and screen them and then recommend to the rest of the cast, here's one I think you guys should look at, um, let's do it. So there were a ton of them that I looked at and said, this is too, this is too awful even for us. There were many like that. Most of the ones I looked at were like that. And then every now and then, um, I would, uh, and then, uh, you know, I would sh show the rest of the cast a film, and I would recommend it. And every now and then they would say, Frank, are you crazy? <laughs> no, you're not going to do this one. So, uh, but most of the time, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, you know the, that small batch of films out of, you know, out of 20 that I would look at, there'd be like three maybe that, that I'd recommend. And, you know, and we, we almost always ended up doing it. We would get the odd, weird, you know, film like Child Bride, which was in a package of films. Why did they even send this to us? <laughs> 1930s era about Child Brides. Uh, and there were films that were like too, you know, that otherwise would have been perfect, but they were too violent. There was too, there was too much of uh, 
uh, of the sexual nature, you know, of abusive um, uh, behavior in it, and that we just did, didn't think, we didn't want to joke about that, you know, we didn't think it was funny to joke about certain things, and so that would, dis that would disqualify a movie um, from us doing it. Which is why movies in the modern era, a lot of them uh, probably we wouldn't do, you know, because they're too intense or whatever. Did I give you something already? Yeah. Yeah. Come here, you big lug. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Did uh, Comedy Central, how, how restrictive or loose were they? Did, were they heavy with the editorial or were you guys no, kind of no, going no, we never, to do whatever? Never got a network note from them. We Which were was, isolated in the Midwest. They didn't want to come and see us. We actually had a, ver a stronger uh, standards and practices department within uh, Best Brains, which is the company that, that made the show. We would debate things and say, is that joke inappropriate? Is that joke too uh, misogynistic? Is that joke too homophobic? Um, and uh, we would have debates about things. And we had a rule that any if a, if, a, if a writer, any writer who didn't like, who had, had any objection to a joke, said, I don't like that joke, um, uh, I don't want it in the show, we would eliminate the joke, uh, no questions, that, that would be it. If someone objected to it, the rule was we would take it out because we knew we could come up with other jokes, you know. We could come up with five other jokes. So we, no one ever got too attached to any, anything. Right here. Yes. Oh, we've got a, a bend right up here. Uh, oh, I hope so. Otherwise, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> asking about season two of Other Space. Um, I don't know where that is in development because uh, Yahoo Television owned the rights, and I think Paul has been working to get them back. But I did see uh, Paul tweet a few months ago, someone asked him if the show was coming back, and he said, season two will happen if I have to shoot it on my iPhone. <laughs> so, and knowing Paul, he will get it done. He's a little distracted by this Ghostbuster movie, which is coming out in a week. It's out, is it out? No, it's coming out next week. Coming out next week. It's premiered, but it's coming out. On the other space, didn't you work with Joel on that? Yes. Uh, we, we had a similar relationship. He played a janitor and I played a robot. <laughs> <laughs> Way to stretch your acting skills. Though. I have a range. <laughs> it's about as long as this DVD box. So, right. uh, originally, this is kind of trivia. Uh, Dave Gruber Allen was uh, going to be in the role of Salian. And he couldn't do it for family reasons. And then Joel stepped in. And uh, the rest is, as they say, history. How about this girl right here? Mm -hmm. Louder. Oh, which? Oh, it's hard to say because we just pooled the jokes into uh, one script, so it was it was very homogenous by the time we were done. It's very hard to even look back and claim ownership or remember what jokes we wrote. Yeah, everyone, although I marked all mine in red. <laughs> Literally, everyone contributed uh, equally to the show because we all had a very similar sensibility. Uh, we were all on the same page in terms of what we thought was funny. Someone might say something uh, that uh, might uh, that might not be that funny. I mean, I never did, but sometimes people would. <laughs> and no, actually, I did all the time. But uh, and then, but that would like inspire your bad joke would inspire someone to to, to come up with a good joke. You know, so in other words, everyone was always um, bouncing off of each other and collabor the collaborative process. Te writing for television on any show is a very collaborative process. So most shows have a room of writers and um, 
the, the best shows are the ones that where everyone just collaborates equally, kind of. This is for you, but I'm going to have to make you come up here because you're very young. <laughs> <laughs> and I like your shirt. Yeah, that is an shirt. awesome shirt. Turn around and let everyone see your shirt. <laughs> very good shirt. Thank you so much. Good question. Excellent question. Uh, this is the best um, C-SPAN I've ever watched. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, how about back there in the orange shirt? What, how did you figure out like what movies to watch? Did you just go through movies? What were you looking for in movies to like watch and riff? Well, uh, a movie had to not just be bad, but had to be bad in a specific way. It had to uh, be lit well, uh, it had to have some kind of plot, which a lot of them didn't, but we took them anyway. Uh, it had to have good sound um, and uh, available to us. Um, not every bad movie is good for riffing. You need a space um, for a joke to be inserted. Um, we don't like to talk over dialogue a lot because it gets muddled in the soundtrack. So there was a lot of requirements uh, to make a bad movie it, <coughs> bad. Um, and also the intent of the filmmaker, uh, there's an earnestness in uh, intent where the filmmaker's really trying to make a great film and they, they fall short of that. But there's heart and integrity, if you can use that word. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Manos. <laughs> uh, which may not have had either of those, or any of those elements, uh, but it, it did need to have some coherency so you could get your way through it. Is it. Was it possible to rip on a movie that went in with the intent of trying to be a comedy? Oh, comedies were hard, very rare. Yeah. The only real comedy we ever did, and I could be wrong about this, is, uh, was uh, Catalina Caper. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, um, yeah, comedies uh, really didn't work. Uh, we, we turned out a few of them, I think. Yeah, uh, we also found uh, John Joe does work, comedy on comedy. Also, um, uh, puppet on puppet comedy doesn't work. <laughs> uh, we tried some of the Jerry and Sylvia Anderson-like um, uh, episode of Stingray. I don't know if you remember that show. But puppet on puppet crime is wrong. Uh, we have a couple time for a couple more. Couple more, couple more questions. Uh, can I pick? Um, lady over here. Yes. Does it matter in this world? Uh, yes. Uh, I think uh, I got a follow up to ask. We we did have separate separate restrooms, but that's because I had removed all of his parts. I think uh, uh, we did a. Uh, I was when we were in Minneapolis doing the Rift Tracks reunion show last week. I was talking to Bridget Nelson, who reminded me. Uh, the episode we did once where Forrester and Frank had two uh, next door neighbors or girls who came over and visited <laughs> and Forrester and Frank were just freaked out <laughs> and couldn't handle it. So um, I, I don't think um, I don't think there was anything going on with anyone in D thirteen. <laughs> that that's a great question though. That that as I don't think we've ever been asked that question. <laughs> Uh, what do you think? Uh, yes. <laughs> 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 I just want you to know that this is from the both of us. Along those lines. And every week when uh, Forrester would kill me, I would think it, it gets better. <laughs> We've, we did some very silly things, so uh, we were a couple in the sense that Laurel and Hardy were a couple, and, and Adam Costello were a couple. 
along the lines of couples, uh, with the new Mystery Science Theater 3000 that's been announced, Patton Oswalt is going to play Son of TV's Frank. If you had your choice, who would you like to be the mother of the son of TV? <laughs> oh, the mother of TV. <laughs> so it would be my wife, in other words. Wow, that's. Uh, I think be only because she's such a good mother, uh, Angelina Jolie. <laughs> It is science fiction, after all. <laughs> well, now, and now, in the timeline or in the, the mythology, Forrester has a daughter. How did that happen? Also, I think Patton is like what, like twelve years younger. <laughs> <laughs> That's speaking of child bride. Uh, <laughs> all goes back to child's bride. All right, right here with the glasses. Uh, we looked at a couple of movies that we really wanted. There was an Elvis film called um, Charo. Charo. It was a Western, uh, but Disney owned it. But that would have been awesome yeah. to have Elvis. The, the things we could have done with the bots alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were a few every now and then. There'd be one that we'd look at and we wanted to, and then it, ultimately we couldn't get the rights to it. We'd be I don't think you missed anything. Yeah. <laughs> Grab a copy of Pothouse 90. Apparently, they're supposed to be free. <laughs> um, and uh, the gentleman in the uh, the uh, gargle blaster shirt. Uh, we talked. We spoke earlier. You had a question. Thank you. Um, I really enjoyed the short that you two did for the live lipgrass. What was that experience like? Do you have any plans for releasing the other shorts and other lipgrass presents? Uh, we have no plans right now with Rift Tracks to release any of those. They've, they've asked us. Uh, uh, so, I don't know. That might happen in the future. Uh, hey, Rift Tracks we like stuff with them. And, uh, you know, we had a great experience with them. And uh, there is, so there is interest. Uh, so we'll see if it happens. Uh, but right now we're doing our live show. And more dates for K came from our live touring show. Uh, we did a benefit with Dave Gruber Allen. Uh, also appearing in this uh, this uh, talk um, in Portland, we did a, a benefit for the Vital Life Foundation, which uh, uh, helps Alzheimer's patients. And Dave Gruberell and actually does a lot of volunteer work with uh, the Alzheimer's group. So uh, uh, that's where the theme this year was love. And more dates for K somehow has <laughs> that <laughs> lots of lots of love. In that. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, everybody likes cake, apparently. But and thank all, you. And all of those feature shows can be found on the Facebook page. And yes, all our live shows, thank you for that plug. Our, uh, Zoe Plague, who does all our booking and uh, helping with everything that we are bad at, uh, will uh, direct you to where you should go to look. Facebook.com, right? Man, the Yep. I got it right. I got one. <laughs> All right, right down here. I just have a question regarding uh, what is your writing vary from the TV show to like a, a feature film versus your stand show with your life? Oh, yeah, those are, um, you know, obviously writing for when Trace and I do writing for movie riffing is a very specific kind of writing. You have a movie or a short or something to work off of um, and to me that you know that's very helpful um, writing a script as I do you know um, writing scripts as I do that um, you know that really, you have to come up with the story yourself you have to come up with the characters it's 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 kind of a bigger endeavor in a way um, than writing a movie riff and then stand up uh, a lot of it is just it's just thoughts coming into my head and writing them down and then going up on stage and realizing that nobody wanted me to say that in the first place. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, writing, you know, on the one hand, writing is writing, but there are, you know, different uh, forms require uh, different uh, parts of your brain, I think. Do you ever watch any of the old mystery science theaters and Think you said, oh, we missed a perfect joke right here. Um, I don't know because the thing of yeah, I, I, uh, 
Well, for one thing, I don't watch a lot of the old ones, so, uh, but um, usually when I watch the shows, uh, um, I usually enjoy them. <laughs> I, and I usually laugh, and I think to myself, wow, is it weird that I'm laughing at my own stuff? <laughs> but then I remember, hey, wait a minute, we were, we were writing the stuff to make ourselves laugh. That was like the whole point of what we, that was our, not the whole point, but that was the method of how we decided on what went into the show was did we think it's funny and then fortunately a lot of other people watching the show thought what we were doing is funny and I really believe that's the only way to write comedy is to write what you think is funny and and oftentimes there'll be a universality to something that's something that's personal to you that think that feels like something that only you that's just part of your experience will actually be a universal experience yeah. and other people will like it too but I, I think you can write comedy thinking oh uh, maybe, well I don't think it's funny but maybe someone else will I mean yeah, that's, that's just death yeah it's, that's just the wrong way to go about it, it. comedy is such a personal thing that yeah. it, it has to mean something to you and then it will mean something and obviously it did mean more uh, to the rest to the rest of the audience, and I think that's what Mystery Science had that people really responded to was that personality, personal thing. There's a, a young lady yeah. way back there who's had her hand up for an hour, and, and we'll make her the last question. Today. So it better be good. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you come on up front? Yeah, we know we're we're going to hear you from back there. <laughs> her question's going to be. Is this over yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, would we ever bring back Invader Zim? Uh, well, that's something that I certainly have no control over. Um, but I know I've heard um, uh, people uh, just from what I've heard other people say. I, I think there, there is, people are considering that very seriously. I think it's something that. Um, that could very well happen. I, I don't know if it'll happen this year or next year, but I know, and you probably know, there's been comic books lately that uh, Joan and Vesquez has written. Um, and um, if I had to guess, if I had to bet money on it, I would say absolutely they'll be. Because you know what? Everything gets remade. <laughs> Everything gets done again. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and that's a show that, that people uh, really love and, and I think I, there's also uh, a general agreement among most people that I've talked to that Nickelodeon really made a mistake by not renewing it and, and that if they had kept it on for five years it would have been phenomenally successful so uh, I, I think it could, def could definitely happen. Thank you. That's a great question. I don't have any more clean things to give you uh, but if you stop by our table uh, you, can, you can choose one of our uh, nicer items. <laughs> uh, we'll be there after our photo thing. Yes. Thank you so much. If you, you do still have questions, uh, you'll have your opportunity if you want to get your picture taken. You'll yes. have them one on either side, get your question and then otherwise you'll need to go back to the table, wait in line like everyone else. So photo op would be a good time to get your Otherwise your no eye contact please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about a big Omaha contact? Does anyone know where we're supposed to go for the phone?